So, hi everyone, I'm Francesco, I'm a research scientist at Spotify, and I'm here to present you our journey to do personalization with audiobooks. This is a great joint effort with a bunch of product teams at Spotify and researchers. So let's start. As you may know, Spotify is one of the largest audio streaming platform, and we have like a huge catalog and huge amount of interactions every day. We have like uh, millions of tracks, uh, half billion user, active users, and like for billions playlists generated. So this comes like with a huge catalog and an everyday interaction with users. So today, as you may imagine, we talk about the personalization channel that comes with this amount of data. Especially like, as you may imagine, we have different surfaces, so home and search, but also different content type that we, uh, with the user interact with, such as podcasts, audiobooks, uh, music tracks, like uh, coming from albums and playlists. But today the talk is not gonna be about the whole personalization challenge, but the focus will be only on home content type, the, the, the content type recommended on home, and specifically about podcasts and audiobooks. Specifically, <laughs> It's going to be about audiobooks. So audiobook is a new content type that uh, we released recently. Uh, we added recently in the catalog of Spotify, we, we, you can, we, which we, where you can find hundreds of thousands of items. And as you can imagine, recommending such a large amount of content, which is new on the platform, comes with several challenges. So today we're going to talk about how we've been developing the recommender system behind the personalization of, of this new content. Uh, specif specifically, we have three main challenges. The first one is like the content type is new, which means that you need to include it into the experience to make it blend with other type of contents that are already more consolidated on the platform, such as music and podcast. So first you, you want to make the experience as smooth as, pos as possible without disrupting the personalization of the consolidated ones. Second, you have the cold star challenge. Of course, it's a new content type, which means that there is an extreme cold star setting which means that from the side of the user, but also the side of the content. You want to understand which are the user um, in, in preferences on a content which is basically new. And it's, we are actually the first one powering uh, rec algorithmic recommendation on this kind of, con this, this, this kind of content ever. And this is the third, the third uh, challenge, which is related to the previous slide, is the scalability, since we have to power recommendation for half a billion users. So how, how do we do that? Uh, let's try to see from this analysis. So basically we did a data-driven analysis and we try to get some insight of how the model should look like. First one is we look at that, the fact that the type of, type of interaction will come from a new product that really sparks, right? So there is a long tail distribution coming from either from the user that interact with the, with the product or the distribution of exposure the, of streamings that reach the, the audiobooks. But the intuition there is that audiobooks and podcasts are actually uh, in, interacted in a similar way, so what we, what we observe is that user represented with low, uh, embedding, uh, low, re low level representation of embeddings coming from podcast interaction, so without audiobooks in the picture, are actually informative for telling you which is going to be the next audiobooks to stream. So here, for example, in the histogram, we just look at uh, sample, sample uh, users having, uh, having a different podcast representation, but sharing audiobook or listening. So you, as you can see, the users that share the same audiobook experience tend to have similar podcast representation. Second is that we want to try to capture any content or uh, any kind of signal that the user can be, give us. Uh, as you can see, the audiobook is kind of high quality type of content, since so, so we can leverage title and the scripture, which are really informative. And again, in the histogram, you can see how audiobooks that are connected because of similarity coming from the embedding space are actually closer than random samples. And third, we want to look at the weak signal. So any kind of signal the user may actually give us before streaming the audiobook. In this case, we look at uh, signals such as like following the audiobook or streaming the preview. And this specifically, uh, this specific group it's really informative, like you can predict with a high probability that if the user is gonna uh, activate one of those weak signals, probably it's gonna follow up with a stream. And the third one, and probably one of the most crucial one, is the fact that we all we wanted to represent this data. So as I said, there is audiobooks and podcasts together in the same uh, space, but the way that we wanna put them together is in a graph. Why? Because we can, we can represent the content mapping short and long-term item relationship. 
Specifically, we want to leverage the co-listening graph. So a, use, a podcast and an audiobook are connected together if there are users that are streaming both. But on the other side, we want to also have content representation into, into account, which is basically the title and description I was mentioning before. And in, the, in this third graph, what, I was, what we are looking at is the fact that why the, the, the graph is important. So basically, two audiobooks are connected here through a bridge, which is the podcast. So we want to make an argument that like, the graph is actually a good candidate to represent in an homogeneous, data struct, an homogeneous way dif two different content types. So through the co-listening graph and to all the analysis that I showed before, the, we, we came out with a proposal, which is this modular architecture, which is a combination between the heterogeneous graph neural network that uh, works as a foundation layer, together with a two-tower model, which incorporates user demographics and allows us to power also cold start user recommendations. So the main three features, as I said, is like the modularity, the fact that we have an heterogeneous GNN. Why the GNN? Because we can capture both long and short-term patterns and relationship between the content. And second, the two-tower, which allows us to learn scalable tastes for all the users, including the cold start ones. Now, what does it mean, like putting together with those two, the, those, the, these two different architecture? It's basically because we can get the best of the both worlds, right? So, the, the message passing architecture of the of the GNN is based on graph stage, so we extend it for the heterogeneous case. So we have evidence that like having an heterogeneous graph neural network is better than homogeneous in this case, because as you can imagine, con audiobooks and podcasts has to be treated as two different node type. Then, to balance the difference in type of interaction, as you can imagine, podcasts have, like, as a consolidated product, has much more, many more interaction rather than audiobooks. So when you sample and do the training, you want to be sure that you balance the representation of both. So what, for that, we propose a new balanced multi-link neighbor sampler. Third, the two, as I said before, the two-tower incorporates user demographic and historical interaction of the full catalog, which includes also music and podcasts. We use indeed user representation coming from music to be sure that we can get high quality representation also for the cold start. And finally, the serving is like has to be fast and near real, real time. So to do so, we have a, near, a nearest neighbor index constructed to pre-build item vectors, as I showed before, while the user vectors are, are generated in real time using, so are reactive to new users and new interactions. As you may have seen, like I started to mention this GNN as a foundation layer. Why is a foundation layer? Because it's like kind of a static layer. So you can treat the GNN as a static and the two tower as a dynamic one. And so we saw like we, we, in the paper, we were aiming to, uh, to have this, distin this distinction because GNN, GNN doesn't need to be retrained really frequently, different from the two tower. And we actually proved in a follow-up work that actually the GNN can function as a static layer and you can retrain less frequently. So first we had to run an offline evaluation, right? So we had to go through, uh, like since there, there was no recommendation, we, we had only a baseline before, we wanted to see how the, the, base, the, the, offline, the new model would look like offline. And so it was good news from the offline evaluation because looking at 90 days for training and two weeks for testing, and where the, where the, the objective is predicting the first new stream of the user with, a new, with an audio book, we saw that combining the two architecture, so in our proposal, this model architecture, we were improving accuracy, but also not hurting coverage, which is really important here, right? Because it's a new product, so we don't want to generate strong, long tail effect. So what, what, what happened is like, this is good news for the warm start users, so users that have been interacting already with audiobooks, but also for the cold start, so people that never, so, uh, never interacted with audiobooks before. So given the, the modularity, so using the two tower and the GNN together, give us again the best performance offline. Then the intuition was that if these holistic representation Kyle Albadio books can also have po podcasts, right? So that's what we did. We look at the show recommendation, so audio, uh, pop, podcast recommendation, and we saw that combining again the two tower with the heterogeneous GNN was actually giving us the best performance. So after these positive results, we went through the A-B test for the audiobooks. So the idea was comparing our modular architecture against the two towers, so without the GNN as a static layer. The idea is like we want to look at uh, consumption patterns, so we want to focus on consumption, but also user activation. 
it's a new product, we were interested to understand if the new recommendation were activating new users, so first stream of an audiobook. Good news is that like, the results, of course, were like, really promising. So we saw a 25% increase in stream rate from the architecture we proposed. And on the other side, the two tower was not really moving much the metric. And as I said, what new good news were also coming from the act user activation. 46% of new of, of difference between the, the control and the treatment for new audiobook start rate, which means that we are activating a lot of users comparing to before. So long story short, the model after a successful A-B test has been rolled out and now is part of the audiobooks for you shelf. So you can actually, uh, it's actually in production. So thank you to follow to meet me and I'm happy to take questions now. Thank you.